Hi, my name is Alan Benici and in this video I will be showing you the code generation for the tutorial I published a few weeks ago about SQL injection. Now there are two things I would like to point out. First of all, my intentions were never to publish this code. Since what prompted me to do that was the number of queries and the number of emails uh, the first video generated. Secondly, there are certain shortcomings. For example, I noticed a few typos in, in, in the code and for that I would like to apologize. Now I'm using Visual Web Developer 2000 X and Date Express Edition, that is free. And uh, I'm going to use C Sharp as my language. So I defined a new project, um, gave it a name, in my case it's SQL Injection. And what I will demonstrate here is the creation of the database. In the next part, I'll, I'll then work on the code. when creating a database it is very important that you always try to play safe now i will make some verbal comments as as the footage scrolls and uh, i've entered certain comments in the text boxes sometimes these will overlap but um, with security try to understand that especially if you're designing a certain type of website you want to be sure that your site is not hacked. It's not something nice and something you're going to boast about. Now, first things first, I created my database. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, a table. In my case, it's a very simple table. It's going to contain three fields, the login name, password, and email. All the three fields are mandatory you cannot leave them blank and that is why each time i remove the checkbox next to allow that and with login name i'm setting that primary key meaning that the database will organize itself according to the login name and login names cannot be duplicated i set the login name to 50 characters which i believe should, sh should suffice Although I've seen certain, for example, hardware devices uh, have a login name of only 8 characters. This can be somewhat limited. In the case of login name, which I've set as a primary key and set as unique, and email, in my particular case, I'm going to specify that you cannot have duplicate values. Meaning, I cannot have two records with the same name. This uh, caters for a situation in which a user creates multiple accounts. It's quite common on many websites that if you try to give an existing email account, it will tell you, we have already registered this account, uh, please go to this page to retrieve your password. That is the reasoning I will not build in uh, to the finished product, but that is the reasoning behind it. Next in line, I'm going to specify database constraints. Constraints are limitations, are checks the database will do before filing the record. In my particular case, I'm going to put two constraints. One is uh, on the email address. And for this, I've borrowed uh, some code, which you see listed on, on the page. This checks that an email is valid. For the password, um, my only const constraint is uh, password length. So I'm going to say a password cannot be shorter than six characters. In more advanced systems, I could specify a password constraint uh, regarding its makeup. For example, I could say that the password must be made up of uh, combination of uppercase and lowercase letters, digits and symbols. The more sensitive and secure the system you want, 
the more you should inconvenience your users. Right? If you limit a password, and I've, I've seen it being done in, in certain systems, uh, live systems, to only uh, uppercase characters, for example, uh, combination in an English language is 26 letters. If you also force digits, suddenly from 26 you've gone up 36 uh, different combinations for a password. If you put in lower and upper case letters, 26 plus 26 plus 10, you're making it more difficult for a hacker to uh, figure out or to uh, hammer the database and uh, trying to get a hit on a password. Although I have not specified a constraint on the login name, um, you might in the production system want to say a login name cannot be shorter than say four characters. But that is up to you. If this were a production system, this were a system uh, would be in life, there would be a lot uh, more fields um, you could include. I would, for example, include date the account was created, date the user last logged in, date the user last logged out. I might even have uh, an audit trail database. So each time the user logs in, I write an entry into that log. I would have, for example, information about the name, contact information about the user, and other other stuff I would want to keep. In good systems and well-designed systems, you should take uh, a certain amount of, of time to make sure that you got all the fields right. It would be a bad case of programming if you suddenly realize that after you've designed the system, a critical component is missing and you have to go back to the drawing board to either put it in from the very beginning or try to patch it into your pro program. Getting it right in the beginning is always the best solution.